All right. So we always have this problem, at least, you know, all of us when, you know, we could have friends come over and visit. What is the best, and we're not in quarantine, what is the best way to cool down a bottle of wine quickly? Do you put it in a freezer? Do you stick it in a bucket of ice? Do you stick it in a bucket of water? Or do you do a mixture of half water, half ice? What is the best way to cool down a bottle of wine quickly? Now, whether you have somebody bringing over a lovely bottle of rosé that needs to be chilled quickly to be served, or you have a lovely bottle of sparkling wine. Okay. It's coming through here. They're coming in. Right, Liz. Just prove, proved again that we have a smart uh, group of pick, uh, people. Everyone picking a mixture of 50% water and 50% ice. That is, in fact, the correct answer. Great job answering. And, of course, the one you never want to do is stick the bottle of wine in the freezer. Inevitably, you will forget it at some point in time, and you will have a giant mess on your hand. I, I can so attest please, to that please, one. Please. Yes. It's not a good way to cool it down, but a mixture of 50% water and 50% ice. You don't need to pull out measuring cups, but that'll help cool that bottle of wine down real quickly so it is ready to serve. So another, uh, someone adding a little bit of um, context to it too, said add a little bit of salt to the water. Um, and I've heard that as well. Uh, great tip um, for you who are uh, chemists out there. Um, you know that that will actually uh, speed up the, the cooling process. So, all right. Exactly. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. Nope. No, you, that's always a good little tip to add. It's either a little bit of salt, but you know, it's just one of those definitely don't put it in the freezer and ice and water mixture just makes it go super fast and chilling it down. So our next is we're going on back to some vocabulary terms. What is enophobia? The fun little word, enophobia. What does it mean? Does it mean you're a wine lover? You are, you, you have a fear of wine? You're a wine collector or a wine drinker? What does enophobia mean? I don't know why, but I just love this term so much. <laughs> I've been waiting for a quiz to put this in there <laughs> for a while. All right. So everyone overwhelmingly ch uh, choosing fear of wine, enophobia. Correct. That is exactly what enophobia is. And I hope none of us have enophobia with a fear of wine. I think we more have an enophobia of a fear of running out of wine. That would be me for sure. That would be me for sure. Okay. So we 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 pulled uh we didn't pull the wool over anyone's eyes with that question. So everyone I'll getting that one right. All right. So our next question is: What AOC produces a hundred percent rosé? Is it Anjou? Is it Gigondas? Is it Aix en Provence? Or is it Tavel? So a little bit of geography and very, very specific question about it produces 100% rosé. Okay. A little bit slower to respond here. Everyone's thinking. I feel like I can, you know, feel the, 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 the feel hamster the on the wheel of the <laughs> So which AOC produces 100% rosé? Okay, so we have someone who said uh, Aix-en-Provence. Uh, we have a lot of votes for Tavel. Another vote for Aix, uh, Aix-en-Provence, Anjou. Uh, but I would say um, the majority here are picking Tavel as their answer. And that is the correct answer. It is, in fact, Tavel is the correct answer for this. Nice job. So, oh, for our smarty pants. Okay. 